All right, I'm gonna need about five minutes of your time to talk about real estate investing. And before you roll your eyes and go on to another video of a cat not understanding how to use a mirror, consider this. If you're investing, chances are, regardless of what asset class you're looking at, you're gonna to wanna to compare apples to apples. So I had a friend ask me the other day, Cam, why would I invest in real estate when it's only returning on average 7% over a 10 year period, year over year, when the S&P 500, a index of the 500 biggest companies on the New York Stock Exchange, is returning 11.1%. And it's a valid question. So it gave me the idea to put together a case study just to break it down for you and show you how both of those investments work. Here, let's take a look. Here's how we're going to do it. I'm gonna pit historical performance of the S&P 500 against a simple condo purchase example where the buyer occupies that property instead of paying rent. Just so we're being fair, we're going to be incredibly conservative on housing assumptions and use historical returns for the S&P over the last 10 years. In this corner, we have the S&P 500 returning 11.1% compounded annually, while the investor is renting for $1,500 a month. And in this corner, we have a $100,000 investment in real estate to buy a $500,000 condo with current interest rates and conservative assumptions about cost. Let's start with the S&P 500. In five years, your $100,000 investment becomes worth almost 170,000. So congrats, you made a flush 70K. But hold on a minute, you also paid $90,000 during that time in rent. So in reality, your $100,000 with the cost of housing accounted for is actually worth just over $79,000. So what about in 10 years? Well, your $100,000 has appreciated into a solid 286 k And at the same time, you spent $180,000 in rent. So guess what? Your $100,000 is still really only worth just under $107,000. That gives you an annualized return of around 0.65%, meaning it took you 10 years to make under $7,000, which isn't that great, am I right? So what about real estate? For your five-year projection, we're gonna assume a $400 a month in condo fees, 25 a year in taxes, four grand annually for general maintenance, and to top it off, $20,000 for land transfer and lawyer fees from the original deal. I think we can all agree that these are relatively conservative for a one bedroom in Toronto. In five years, your property would be worth almost 640,000, meaning it appreciated 140K. You also built up over $40,000 in equity from paying down your mortgage. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about costs. And during that time, you paid interest on the loan, condo fees, taxes, maintenance insurance, and land transfer and lawyer fees from the original deal. After 10 years, the investment gets a lot better. Your home has appreciated over 370,000. You built almost $90,000 in equity. And once you take into account all of your costs, your 100K investment is worth a whopping 283 grand. That's essentially an 11% year over year return, which is right on par with what we were talking about for the S&P historical average. The difference here is that you've leveraged the bank's 400,000 to make a lot more money. That means in our case study, you've earned 28 times the amount of money by putting your initial $100,000 investment into real estate as opposed to a stock investment. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I stacked most of the assumptions in favor of the stock investment. So here's how we did that to make the most conservative assumptions possible for real estate. First off, the 10 year average for real estate appreciation is 7% year over year, not 5%. Some analysts even project that Toronto will outpace that in the years to come. Second, the average price of rent in Toronto is about 1,900 a month for a one bedroom in the core and it's only going up. Our assumptions were a flat 1,500 for the entire 10 year term. Third, our costs for condo fees, taxes, maintenance, insurance were incredibly aggressive and probably more than they needed to be. And fourth, if you make money or interest investing in the S&P 500 that's not in your TFSA, you're going to have to pay capital gains tax on that amount. If your condo is considered your primary residence, that profit is not taxable as a capital gain when you sell. So there you have it. Now, don't get me wrong, I believe diversification in investments is one of the most important things you can do as an investor. And that math was very general and broad. But if you're like me and you like a method of forced savings that takes a long-term approach to get rid of any short-term fluctuations in the market, real estate can be one of the best ways to build wealth long-term. Now, if you watch this video and you thought, I wanna know more about real estate, feel free to give us a call today and we can sit down and talk about whether or not a real estate investment may be right for you. As always, home is where your story begins and I look forward to talking to you soon.